When water and carbon dioxide love each other very much, they make a baby. And that baby is acid rain. Yes! Carbonic acid, nature's fury and liquid form against pollution. The greatest ally of a climate activist. So, after suffering in school for two months and finishing the exams, we are so back! And I have come to bring you a video where I explain how you can make this rock-eating chemical out of household items. For this, you need, first of all, a source of carbon dioxide. An isolated system where carbon dioxide is being produced rapidly and with no exterior gases entering it. Yeah, you heard me right, there's a pretty good canister of carbon dioxide floating around the back of right about now, powered by a PS3 controller. And naturally, we're gonna go on a one piece of the the grand line, searching for the submarine. The treasure that would make their dreams come true. But today, we'll be cooking up carbon dioxide by other means, inventing new ways of pollution. It's fine, it's healthy for the plants. <laughs> To start off, we need carbon dioxide. To make it, I could simply set something on fire. I'm however not sure how much YouTube would like me posting a video where I set a pile of wood on fire to meet the fate of Anakin Skywalker and recommend people to do the same. Plus, it would be largely impractical, with all of them want gases being released. Alternatively, I could just breathe into a balloon, however there would be too much nitrogen and leftover oxygen in it to make it practical as well. So I'll be doing it much more chemically. I'll be mixing a carbonate with an acid. So when you think of a carbonate, you could think of calcium carbonate, eggshells, or sodium bicarbonate. In fact, I'll be using just that, sodium bicarbonate, baking soda. In terms of an acid, I'll be using a weak acid, vinegar. It's the best choice, mostly as it's extremely accessible. I was thinking of using hydrochloric acid instead, but I'm afraid concentrated hydrochloric acid would just be far too violent. Plus, I might be making a video of mixing hydrochloric acid and baking soda in Volcano and labeling it Yellowstone or some other straight up explosive mixture. So yeah, I'll be making a science fair Volcano and extracting its fumes, basically. So here's the basic setup for gas capture. Water inside a bottle, put into a pot filled with water and with a tube passing inside of the bottle. So in terms of gas capture, this is one of the best setups. Gases will be formed right over here, and they will be passed through this tube and into this bottle, which will cause the water inside of the bottle to depressurize, slightly increasing the water level. There is no need for any pump or anything like that, as there is already pretty, high, pretty low pressure inside of the top of this bottle. So the gases will just go in automatically and pretty easily at that. So I've poured some baking soda into this jar, approximately 5 grams. If you're going to be working with uh, slightly over 100 milliliters of 7% vinegar, I would recommend you use 5 grams. If you're working with 5% vinegar, then use 4.5. It depends on the vinegar which you're using. So anyway, the next step to this would be to mix these two ingredients and to put on the cap to this bottle as quickly as possible. So the trick here is to quickly mix them together and then to quickly cork it, because otherwise a stream of white will blow out and spill everywhere and then it's going to be a pain to clean up. So yeah, don't fulfill my mistake. Cork it as quickly as you can afterwards. We'll just quickly mix them together. And it was a bit too late. So let's try this again. Let's go for round two, shall we? God damn it. So basically what I did this time, I slightly raised the height of the pot, making the tube slightly longer. And I poured the sodium bicarbonate into this tube. So if you can see, there's white powder inside of it. I'm hoping the paper and sodium bicarbonate should be much more, should slide much better against each other. So let's find this out. Uh, I have the paper towels here. I should probably move them away for now in case things get messy. Um, great, so I'll just dump this and I will... There we go. That was good. That was a good reaction. As you can see, there's nothing left in here as well. So yeah, uh, nah, who cares, there was nothing there. There was nothing much there anyway. 
Only a few small bubbles. So now that we're done, uh, after a bunch of experiments, washer and Russian swearing, let's look into the chemistry behind all this. Sodium bicarbonate, or hydrocarbonate as I like to call it, has the chemical formula of NaHCO3. It's a salt of the sodium ion with a hydrogen ion, so its structure would look something similar to NaHOOCO. So these two are the salts. These two are the ions, and this is the conjugate base, carbonate. So the interesting part about this is that this is kind of like halfway acid, halfway base, because of this hydrogen, so I just find that really cool. Now we mix the sodium bicarbonate with acetic acid, H-C-H-3-C-O-O-H. Or this whole thing could actually be called... Uh, H-O-A-C. This part means acetate. This is kind of like the en passant equivalent for chemistry. So I don't know if your chemistry teacher will let you write uh, acetic acid like this whole thing, but oh, this is valid. So sodium bicarbonate and acetic acid well, the acetic acid, the conjugate base of acetic acid, is much more powerful than carbonate. So therefore, the acetate just basically rocks out of the carbonate, causing it to become sodium bicarbonate, bicarbonate, no, sodium acetate, and uh, carbonic acid. Now this part, we don't fully care about. Uh, we're mostly looking at this carbonic acid. This carbonic acid, however, unluckily, decomposes quickly into uh, CO2 and H2O. Now why it decomposes this quickly and how it decomposes back, I don't know the whole equilibrium reaction. So now that we at last have some pure carbon dioxide gas captured inside of the water, I'll just quickly lit it. Uh, I can't lit it right now because the level of water is basically overflowing on this thing right now, as you can see. Uh, I'll lit it and I'll leave it sitting for a few days. So yeah, now I have this bottle of just carbon dioxide and water uh, just filled in the bottle with no gases entering or escaping. Just like a certain submarine. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I will leave this for a few days sitting now. Before I did it out of boredom, but now there I actually did it and I know that there is a pretty interesting reaction. Which will cure. So I'll leave it for overnight, I'll give you a progress the next day. So I left it sitting and something interesting happened. Much like the submarine f***ing imploded. So you can see that like, it is incredibly caved in from every side. No, I didn't touch it. So, so essentially what happened with this bottle, the carbon dioxide and the water, did a fusion dance together, causing the bottle to cave in. Honestly, I don't know why I caved in as much. Uh, in my hypothesis, when I did this before, it should have stayed as carbon dioxide and water. So did I get it right? Anyone who knows, do tell me in the comments. I am genuinely curious about this. So if I were to unscrew this, you can see that it would refer to its normal uncrushed, uncrushed state. Hopefully. And this stuff inside should be carbonic acid. So here I have two cups. This one has just normal washer from the tap. And this one has nothing in it. So I'll pour the carbonic acid inside of this. And I'll get some pH indicator, which I have over here. So, uh, this one is water, as far as I remember. So if we get this, and we pour some pH indicator in this... You can see that it becomes a slightly bluish color, which means it's neutral. However, if we get uh, the pH indicator and pour it into this... Carbonic acid solution. 
you can see that it becomes a more reddish color. So I'm going to add a little bit more to each over here. So the color difference is much more visible. So as you can see, this is clearly much more acidic than this. So the most surprising part is if we take this, we can take a sip of this. And it tastes very fizzy with a little bit of red cabbage indicator, as you can probably expect. I mean, yeah, it does taste like, it does taste sour, and it tastes quite a bit like soda. And that is how you make carbonic acid, and put a bunch of submarine memes in the video. Okay, that's it for this time. Thank you for the thousand subs, and sorry for not uploading for as long. I'm out.